Hi everyone, Adrian Everhart with you tonight live. I'm going to talk about how to know if you've met your soulmate. I get asked this question so often in dating and relationships. Have I met my soulmate? Have I met the man I'm really supposed to be with? If I do, how would I know? What will it look like? What will it feel like? Because a lot of the times when you experience a relationship with someone brand new, you really experience a lot of the same sort of ups and downs and problems and troubles that you would if you were just quantum dating. So I'm going to talk about that more tonight. Hi, everyone who's joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I love that you're tuning in with me tonight. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and you like my content. So first, I want to share with you that if you're tuning in live right now, on May 14th, uh, sorry, April 14th. On May 4th, I'm gonna be having a live one day class that's totally devoted to femme dating tools. So if you've always been interested in my femme program and you've missed out on it previously before, this class is for you. It's a one day retreat with me and I spend so much time with you going over all my femme dating tools and femme dating tools FEM stands for Feminine Energy Mindset Method, and it teaches you how to get back in touch with your feminine energy, which is something that you lose as a young person in life. You lose it and become much harder on the outside, and it really affects your relationships with men. So I teach you how to get much softer on the outside and then be mountain strong on the inside so you can really attract and cultivate a loving, long-lasting relationship. I see someone from Raleigh, North Carolina. It's so great to have you here, a local. And uh, thank you so much for everyone. I love that you're tuning in. And so happy you're with me here tonight. I'm going to read more of your questions here in just a second. So getting right to it, we're going to talk about how to know if you've met your soulmate. Now, online dating, for most of us, one of the reasons I'm teaching this class, the link is going to be below in the description, is that dating is very difficult. Even if you were to have your soulmate walk right up to you and you, you knew this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, you then have the question, how do I really know this is my soulmate? How do I know for sure that there is such a thing as soulmates? And then what are you going to do when you have that big first argument and you know it's coming <laughs> you know it's coming real life is going to happen so even in the most perfect of relationships there's going to be a moment where you get complacent with one another and you really don't honor and value each other as much as you previously did and that's going to happen with anybody with any relationship you're going to have this moment where you really take your partner for granted and you don't see them in this golden light that that you previously saw them in. So it's coming, it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time. Even if you put together in a room two people who love each other, they're just crazy about each other, can't get enough time together, with a certain amount of time, there will be a conflict. Someone's gonna get jealous, someone is going to get selfish, and you're gonna have conflict, and you might go, uh-oh, I don't have a soulmate here because you're having friction. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. Someone's already asked in the comments, you know, how do you know that you have a soulmate? What would that even mean? What does that even look like? So I believe you can have lots of soulmates. I believe, I believe arranged marriages can work out perfectly fine if you put in the work to make love something ongoing. So love can be instant attraction where you like each other and you have, you know, that the, some boxes get checked off as far as income or looks or health or status or whatever it may be. So that's really going to help. But more than that, if you were on a deserted island and you were just left with one man to love and you wanted to have a happy successful life with that person and as much pleasure, safety, and peace as you possibly could, do you have the tools 
to make that happen. So to me, this is a little bit of the mindset that goes into having a soulmate. It's not that you've met the last person on earth or you're on a deserted island or you're in an arranged marriage situation. But uh, just to backtrack a little bit, John Gottman has talked a little bit about arranged marriages. I don't know if you've ever watched him on YouTube, any of his videos, but he is a scientist. He always comes at things from a very, uh, the, the perspective of data backing up everything he's saying. And he's found that a lot of arranged marriages do actually work out because people are coming at it equally from both sides. They're wanting to make it work. So getting back to soulmates, what makes up a soulmate? In my opinion, I think it's timing. You have met someone that in this moment in time, they're making you feel so wonderful and good, alive and loved. And there's enough mutual exchange happening that the two of you feel it together. And you feel like in this moment in time, you are my soulmate. You are the person that I want to walk into the sunset with. And by walk into the sunset with, I mean grow old and die. <laughs> so it's not the most, uh, you know, happiest ending, but it's what we're all facing. We want someone to walk with us through life, through this journey of life, through all the ups and downs, and someone to be there with us, to comfort us, to love us, to make us feel safe and secure. The more of life you experience, the chances that you're going to have more uncomfortable situations, more death, more loss. I don't mean to be a big giant bummer for you all, but the longer you live, you will embrace more loss. It will happen to you. So you want to have a partner in your life who will be able to stand by you, be with you. The two of you can support and love one another through all of the difficult days and the wonderful, happy, happy, beautiful days until you uh, you know, you walk into that sunset together of old age. So a lot of you, you might be just in your 20s and you're like, well, this is forever away. Well, there's also having children and there's other things like this beautiful complications in life. So you want to choose your partner wisely, but a soulmate is definitely someone that in this moment of time is someone that is activating in you and you are activating in them the same positive, wonderful feelings of exchange that you are making this planet a wonderful and beautiful place to live together through all the highs and the lows. That is the key point is sticking together, not only when things are wonderful, but when things are down in the gutter below. Okay. I think you all know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm just going to check in with you here and I'm going to get onto my topics about how to know if you've really met someone that you want to connect with long term, aka soulmate. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Hi to everyone. Melissa Rosina, uh, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. You've been tuning in so much. And let's see, someone's in from Boise, Idaho, who says they're in the Philippines. That's very interesting. And thank you so much for all tuning in. Uh, someone from Italy, F16 from Italy, and Arlene and Emma. Hi, everyone. And Michelle, I see you up there. So let's talk a little bit about, oh, and Clary, uh, thank you from Texas. Let's talk a little bit about what it feels like when I met my husband, the man who became my husband. So I have husband number one and I have husband number two. And my first husband, as everyone you may know from reading my background on my website, everheartcoaching.com, you know that I very much loved my first husband. We tried so hard to make it work and we just couldn't make it work out. But in retrospect, I was really in my boy energy. I was very controlling. I was very manipulative. I was very selfish. And to be honest with you all, I had no clue that I was being this way. I had no clue at all. And not until later in life, 
years later did I realize that how much I had been manipulating and controlling him trying to get a specific outcome. So you better believe now with all my coaching clients, I tell them, don't control the man, don't control the outcome, don't encourage him, warn him, suggest to him, tell him what to do, try to save him. You can't do it. You can't do it. You have to let the man be the man. You have to let him figure it out for himself. Otherwise, you become her school teacher to the man you aren't hot, sexy, beautiful, wonderful wife. So with husband number one and husband number two, husband number two is Jeff, who I love very much. He's a wonderful match for me, very much a soulmate for me. And one of the first things that happened with him is that the relationship was very easy. And by easy, I mean it flowed effortlessly. I didn't have to put a lot of work into it. He was pursuing me. He would call me on the phone to set a date with me and also be setting a date with me later in the same week. He was pursuing me. He was coming towards me. I didn't have to work to win his affection or his attention. It was easy. So you definitely want to look for someone where this is unfolding relatively easily. You're not having to um, be up in your head, which is masculine energy. You're in your body and you're just like, oh, this guy just keeps showing up and he just keeps wanting to take me out and make love to me and buy me dinner and fix things around my house. That's what you're looking for. It's easy. It's easy. Travel will be easy with them. Going to dinner and a movie will be easy with them, you see. It will unfold effortlessly. Now, I talk a little bit about another thing. You'll have things in common. That isn't always the case, but you will have enough in common that the two of you will connect on very important issues. This may be big things such as politics or animal welfare, human rights, religion, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I know it'll be uh, aspects that are important for you. Now, one of the things that really attracted me to Jeff, my current husband, is that he really had a background in caring for animals. He had actually worked for a cat rescue, which I thought was just so incredibly endearing. And he had spent a good deal of his life practicing vegetarianism and other qualities that to me just showed that he really loved animals. I totally love animals. And I now have a partner that cares for our animals incredibly well. That means so much to me to have that in common with someone, someone who gets it, not someone who's going to, you know, kick the dog out the door or uh, not forget to let the cat inside. You know, these are important things for me. You have to find what is important for you, you see. So you're going to have this important stream that is where you're able to connect in common. But not everything. Politics, we are bipolar opposites. Religion, we are pretty much opposites. And we just don't really talk about them. We have very different backgrounds, very different upbringings. And it makes life very interesting to have someone who feels different about politics than I do and different about God or the religion or the universe than I do. It's just interesting. You don't have to think what I think for me to love you. Now, the next tips here is that when you met your soulmate, what will happen is you will mess up. You will mess up. You'll You'll go, you'll revert to some old dysfunctional behavior that previously did not serve you. Or you will experience that partner also having some sort of dysfunctional behavior that they previously had in other relationships, including relationships with their parents. And they'll bring that into the relationship and you'll experience it. So that is when one of you will test the other one's boundaries by misbehaving or acting in a childlike behavior that isn't grown adult you. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. If you don't, please feel free to comment in the comment section here. But we've all been there where we act up 
and we show a side of ourselves that is not the best side of ourselves. And what does that mean? It means you're human. It means you're human and you're capable of saying things and doing things that are not the best behavior in a relationship. It doesn't mean I want a lifetime of this. I want a lifetime of you acting this way. But what it does mean is here comes the high wave. Is it going to knock us down or am I going to ride out that wave? So in a lot of my work, I talk about riding out the waves together and life is going to give you big waves. But when the two of you are devoted to each other, that no matter what that wave is, you're going to ride it out together. And maybe that partner won't be navigating the raft, but they'll be holding on for dear life, you will be navigating during that hard time. So what am I saying? Not all times in life will you and your partner both be giving 100%. Sometimes your partner will only be able to give 20% and you will give 80%. You see, it's not always in this perfect balance, but you want to ride it out and you want to give it time to adjust. So you mess up, he messes up. There's an imbalance in the relationship, but you write it out and you eventually get back to a place where it's resting in a balanced state. Now that takes the two of you actively working on this thing called love. That takes the two of you saying, I care about this relationship. I care about us and I want to make it work. What do you think we can do? That is what you say to the man and you make it come together. Men will solve problems much more slowly than women will. And when you can go at it from this place of, I want to make this work. I want to figure us out. I love us too much to argue. I love us too much to behave badly like this. What do you think we can do? And you come up from that place and let the man have an active uh, part in solving it. That will be a big one. That will be a big one. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is that you will likely break up and then reconnect. Yes, you will. Even with your soulmate, it may not be smooth sailing from day one. You may have a time where the two of you break up for a little bit and have to get back together. I have very good friends of mine who are about 15 years younger than me that have been in love for a good long time since their early college days. And even they had a little bit of a breakup before they got back together. So when you break up, it doesn't have to be the end. It can actually be this time apart where you really miss that person. You miss them and you have this absence. But you have to go and do your own thing, date other people, sleep with someone new, um, you know, whatever it is guys want to do or women want to do. And then you come back around and you appreciate that relationship even more than before. So a breakup can actually strengthen the relationship. So I teach this in the ABCs to get him back which is one of my best selling programs. It talks about how to reconnect with your ex after a breakup. And even if you don't reconnect with them, if for some reason you decide you don't want them or they are just not what you wanted or they are incapable of coming back around and loving you fully and wholly, you learn so much in that program that you become a different person. You become transformed and you attract really uh, a much higher quality partner in your life anyway. So it's all win-win. All right. So those are my tips. It will be easy. You will have things in common that are on a really important scale, but not everything in common. Having a lot of things not in common will actually make your relationship really interesting. You'll always have something to talk about. I mean, you can just imagine what politics must sound like in our life if we're on opposite political ends. <laughs> so, um, or, you know, if one of us is an atheist and one of us believes in God, I mean, it's, it's very, very fun conversation. 
And then you will mess up, he will mess up, but the two of you will be able to bring it back to balance and that you will likely suffer a breakup, but then be able to reconnect at some point and build something stronger. Now, if you want to learn more about dating, I do have this program. It is the FEM Tools for Dating. I'm going to post the link below in just a little bit. It is a very inexpensive class. It's a one day class for all you ladies to do something just for you. And I will post the link below. I'm going to take a couple of questions. Let's just scroll up here. Hi, Arlene. Oh, thank you, Asha. Sending me light and love and hello from the Bahamas. Um, Arlene says, I've made mistakes over the three years together, but he continues to do to me, do for me. <laughs> Way to go with that. Um, you know, you can't drive a good man away no matter how much you mess up. And you really want to learn how to hit that reset button and learn how to reconnect with his heart. And so much of this is about changing what you're expecting the man to do, what you're expecting to have happen. So much of it is about our expectations. And instead, be responsible for yourself. Be responsible for your own happiness. Take accountability for your own feelings instead of that other person being responsible for you. I don't know if that connects to what you're feeling right now, but I was feeling it. So I hope that that's a little bit of the answer you're looking for. Dee Dee, I forgot to mention you. No, I didn't. I'm saying it right now. Hi, Dee Dee. Rosina said, I felt I was with my soulmate recently. He was my first boyfriend in school. Uh, when we were six, but we split about a month ago because of commitment. Oh, that's wonderful. You were connected since you were children. You know, sometimes you'll have a person like that in your life. I have a couple of them that I have just been connected with for so long that I cannot imagine life without them. And, you know, Maybe there's more to this, like, you know, past life stuff. We're never going to understand whether you were their mom or they were your dad or who knows what's going on. But there just really are some guys you feel closer to, but it just doesn't work out with. But, you know, there's something there. There's some sort of magic there. And just honor that relationship for however it evolves, because there is something wonderful there. It may not mean a love connection. It might not mean into the sunset. Look, it's going to take a very strong masculine energy man to want to be with you into the sunset. And that is what you want. You don't want a man who's on the fence, who doesn't know how to claim you or is afraid of commitment. You want a man that is confident and wants your heart with no doubts. That is what you want. Okay. Skylar said, I just met someone who I feel is safe, loves me and treats you like a queen. And he's so easy. Yeah. And so now you just want to give it time. You want to let all of the, the words and the actions be separate. You want to hear the words and uh -huh, mm -hmm, hear all the words, but you want to watch for actions. You want to make sure that he is doing what he says. Okay. Arlene says this man she's with is different than other men. He's considerate and generous, shares her life views. And um, you're interested in private session, you just email me. I have a little autoresponder that I'll shoot you over to a link called private coaching on my website at everheartcoaching.com. Yes. Oh, good stuff. Melissa's saying she had similar experiences. Jupman has says, oh, sending me love from Germany. Mwah. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Emma. Oh, I'm glad, Emma, you have ABCs to get him back and you're doing that program. Fantastic. Thank you for purchasing that program and for telling us about it. I put my heart and soul in the ABCs to get him back. The ABCs to get him back is why I'm with you here tonight. And I became a coach it's because 
I got dumped so hard and it devastated and wrecked my life so bad. I swore if I ever got to the other side of it, I was going to tell every woman on this planet how to get over heartbreak and get on with your life and possibly get your man back at the same time. And that's what I created. That's what I created with that program. Oh, CA, thank you so much for your donation. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Please let me know if you have a specific question. She says, uh, Shivy, Shivetti Betty. Oh, Shivetti Betty. Hi. You are a regular. Hi. Um, do you recommend law of attraction manifestation principles to your clients when it comes to love? What about specific person techniques? Oh, what a fantastic question. So there's a gal on YouTube. I know y'all have seen her. And it seems like every day she's posting something about attract your specific person. Um, attract your specific love. Here's how. So I am going to see Esther Hicks who is Abraham, who channels Abraham the uh, next weekend. I have met her before. I've spent time with her. I've been studying Abraham since 1994. Uh, back when she used to be on the Johnny Carson show and would talk with a voice that sounded like she was an alien. <laughs> so this relationship goes way back. So the reason I'm telling you about law of attraction in this is that can you attract a specific person? You can. Um, my feelings on it are that when you align your energy with the energy of that specific person and you are on the same little thread, you guys will align and you'll come together. Absolutely. So let's say you want to align your energy with a man who has said, I don't want to be with you. I'm not right for you. You deserve someone better. And you're like, I miss him. I love him. I want him. So you got to you got to go way down here and align your energy with him. And that's the problem is that. I'm not so sure once you get there, you're really going to want your energy aligned with that person. That's my only problem with that. However, in New Man Manifesto, I teach you how the woman can heal the man through her. And that's what I did with Jeff. You know, Jeff lost his father. Not even a year later, he lost his mother to cancer. And then he lost his job and he lost a beloved cat. And like I've already told you, this guy's an animal lover. So I didn't want to go down to this depressed place of figuring my life out and dealing with grief to align with his energy. You see, I didn't want to do that. So what I did is I created in my mind and with my new man manifesto tools, what I wanted in a partner. And I correlated it and backed it up with the qualities about him that I already knew existed, that I loved, that were real, that were real time. And by real time, I mean that those wonderful, beautiful qualities he had that I would think about and that I would write about in my new man manifesto and I would identify with were real, not things that happen within the first, say, the first three months of our, us dating. Because in the first three months of us dating is when a man is on his best behavior. All right. So this video is turning into a law of attraction video, but I hope you get what I'm saying. You want to have the qualities clearly defined that you are seeking in a relationship and what they will feel about. What would it feel like? I'm sorry. And you want to have the, that specific person that you love, all the qualities that just drove you crazy, drove you into wonderful, wonderful bliss and joy, whatever they were, whatever they were. 
One of my favorite things about Jeff is that it can be 20 degrees below zero and he is warm. His body is warm. <laughs> and I'm always cold. Even if it's the summertime, I'm cold. Yet this man can just put his hand on me and it's like an oven, an oven mitt just came out of the oven. And so that's just a small example of one of the positive things I would focus in about him and be grateful for and pull those positive qualities to you because you don't want to pull the qualities to you where the guy was saying things like, you deserve better. You deserve someone better than me, someone who can really be there for you. Or worse, the guy has just broken up with you and said, I don't want to be in a relationship. You see? All right. So I'm going to move on to one or two more questions and I'm going to have to wrap up for tonight. I hope you can all join me for my FEM Tools in Action class. This is a very inexpensive class. It's a one day retreat. I'm going to post the link below, or if you've got your keyboard, it's everheartcoaching.com slash fem tools, or it's on the front page of my website. So Asha, your question is, is getting my attention here. It says, while you're hoping for him to feel what he's missing and slide back into your life, do you recommend to remain in contact, occasional messages, share travel pics, likes on social media? That's a good question because in the ABCs to get him back, I talk about this a little bit. I talk about how there is a good side to this. There is a good side to having a little bit of correspondence with that person. And I talk about in the ABCs to get him back how uh, after Jeff and I had broke up, I sent him a picture of a little dog we had that we both loved um, and just said, you know, I think he's missing you. <laughs> and did I know it was going to get to him? I sure did. But also I wanted him to know that this family was missing him and we were missing connecting with him. And I don't think there is a man out there that doesn't mind hearing that we miss you and we miss connecting with you. And, um, and I think that's just really important to share the positive things. You're not trying to guilt them. You're not trying to coerce them or control them. Remember, don't control the man. Don't control the outcome. Don't coach, warn, criticize, poach, harass, encourage, all those things, but you're letting just let this man know, like, we feel your absence, and I'm not sending you a big, huge email, and then another email two days later because you didn't respond to the other email. No, you, you send it in just a couple of sentences. Men will digest that better, so I do think that that's really a good thing to share. Okay. Um... Last question. Let's just see here. Um, Shvetty Betty said, right, it's a good point. Sometimes attracting a specific person can be wonderful because it forces you to make some changes and start loving yourself, but sometimes it's more effort than it's worth. Y yeah. However, if you know what you want, it's what you want go for it. Give it a few months. And the ABCs to get him back is a three-month program. Three months out of your life in the grand scheme of things, not very long. Otherwise, you lie in bed at night going, what if I would have done this? You're wondering, what if I would have taken that chance or that risk or whatever it is? And I have that on my website. I think it's called four words to live by. At least I tried. So I teach that in the ABCs to get him back. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off. Sending you so much love tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Please give me a thumbs up if you appreciate my videos and everything that I'm sharing with you. When you give me a thumbs up on a video, it helps it get shared to other women that are your age who are single or searching the same type of videos you are, which means more women will learn about me and more women will learn about their wonderful, powerful, dynamite, feminine energy and not be at the mercy of using their boy energy or their brain power to make their relationships function. Wouldn't that be a wonderful world? <laughs> 
especially for all you guys out there too. All right, everybody. Feel free to, if I didn't answer your question, just ask it in the comment section below and I'll see if I can't get to it later this week. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. You have a beautiful rest of your week and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.